Hi everyone, my name is Adam. Welcome to the first in a series of videos on controlling X-Plane using LabVIEW. Why am I making these videos? I'm an avionics engineer by training and that means that when I was at university I had to study quite a number of control system subjects. But I never found that I could understand what was going on just from the lecture material alone. It wasn't until I actually implemented some of the systems that were being described that I could actually understand how they worked and see what the effects of changing the different different parameters were. And so if you're like me, someone who learns by doing, then hopefully this walkthrough will allow you to experiment and play with a control system in a nice, safe, controlled environment where you can control a bunch of variables and see the effects of the changes that you make. In this series of videos, we're going to use X-Plane to provide our simulation environment, primarily because I'm familiar with it. I've used it with great success for these style of projects in the past. But you could just as easily use any other piece of simulation software or game as long as it allows you access to the appropriate output variables and then allows you to inject your data back in. So flight gear, DCS, uh, anything like that, potentially armor. And if these videos are successful, I might look at doing some of those down the track just to see how we might do it. LabVIEW we're using for the control system. Uh, specifically because I don't have a lot of experience and I wanted to use this as an exercise to teach myself LabVIEW um, but also because it's a really excellent tool for developing user interfaces for these sorts of systems very quickly. It's quite intuitive uh, especially if you're not from a programming background. If you are from a strong programming background some of the ways it does things are slightly confusing but it's it's all pretty easy to work out. This is the first time I've ever made this style of technical video, so I realise that there may be some quality issues and things that I can improve on. If you have any suggestions as to ways that I could improve, either the content or the presentation or the length of the videos, please let me know. In this first video, we're going to look at how to get data out of X-Plane and into LabVIEW. In the second video, we'll look at how to return the favor and get data from LabVIEW back into X-Plane. And in the third video, we'll look at tying those two things together and putting a little really basic control system in between it so that we can control the pitch of an aircraft. Let's get started. So before we can do anything in LabVIEW, we need to configure X-Plane to actually send some data out so that we can receive that data and, and, and see what's going on. Um, so I've just started X-Plane here. Uh, pick any airport you want. Um, I'm going to start with the Cessna 172 just because it's nice and stable. So initially we're not going to have any control in, in any of our axes. So something that's, that's statically stable or at least close to it is, uh, is a good place to start. Just daytime, clear conditions. And we'll load that up. Okay, now once that's loaded, there's a few things we need to do. The first thing we want to do is go up to settings. We want to go to net connections. And you want to go to the data tab. And what we want to note here is the port number for sending data and receiving data. So we can see down the bottom here X-Plane is going to receive on port 49000 and we're going to send on 49001. Uh, we don't need to change anything there, we just need to note those settings down for later. The next thing we want to do is go back into settings and go data input and output. So there's a few ways that we can get data out of X-Plane. The, the quickest and easiest one to start with is just using X-Plane's inbuilt UDP um, capability. And what we can select here is a whole bunch of internal parameters from X-Plane. And we can select whether we want them, you, you can see by this little legend down here, we can select 
whether we want to send them via UDP, whether we want to send them to a file, um, whether we want to send them to one of the other tabs in this page, and whether we want to see them in the cockpit. Uh, so what we want to do to start with is we just want to select two of these items. So we'll go, we'll grab flight controls, and we'll grab pitch roll and headings. And every time we select one of these, we're going to want to send it both over UDP and in the cockpit so that we can see what it is that we're sending. So now, once we close that window, we can see up in the top left hand side of the screen, we've, we can see the data that X-Plane is sending out. So it's currently set to send those that out 20 times per second. So there's not much going on now, obviously, because the aircraft's sitting still. Uh, but if I was to go up here and let the aircraft, the AI rather, fly the aircraft, um, we can see all these values start to change. Uh, nose wheel steering, because it's driving in circles. Um, and yeah, so that's some good data. So that's what we'll want to receive in LabVIEW. So that's all we need to do in X-Plane. Uh, I'll leave that there, and now we'll go over to LabVIEW and start configuring it to receive data. Okay, so now that we've got that data being sent from X-Plane, let's set up a receiver in LabVIEW. So the first thing we want to do is set up our UDP connection. Get UDP open. And the only thing we need to to that because we're on the local host is the port that we noted down earlier in X-Plane which is 49001 that X-Plane is sending on uh, then from there we're going to do a UDP read pipe the error through and the connection ID through and then when we're finished with it, we'll do a UDP close. We'll put that over here. We'll pipe the error through and the connection ID through. Oops. And here we pipe the error through to this thing. Okay, so the only other thing we need now is we need to get the data out of the UDP read. So every time we run this, we will get some data in this indicator. So we'll run this just to confirm that it's working. So you can see I've still got X-Plane running in the background. Explain will continue sending UDP data even though the simulation's paused. Just the data obviously won't change because nothing's going on. So let's talk a little bit about the data structure that that Explain is sending out there. There is a document that's included with the Explain installation that describes the UDP message structure, um, and the the summary is that there is. Uh, four bytes at the start that describes the type of packet. Then there is an index byte used internally by Xplane that we don't care about. And then what happens is over in Xplane, each one of these entries that we selected in the um, data input and output section gets output as a four byte integer, which, which is the index. So this index number down here and then the actual data gets sent out as an array of eight four byte single precision floats so doesn't matter whether there's data assigned to all the all the entries each one of these rows will go out as eight four byte floats so we need to take this data and break it back up into those floats Okay, so we don't we don't care about the actual string that we received. 
Now, the first thing we'll do is we'll strip off those first four characters at the start that describe the type of the packet as well as that index character because they're always going to be the same for us with what we're doing at the moment and and we don't care about them. So we'll just get rid of them. So we, we take a subset of the string. starting from from position 5 so lab view strings are, are zero indexed like in C uh, so starting from the that'll actually be the six element and we don't need by default it'll just give us the the rest of the string from that offset uh, so from there we want to use the the lab view function there's um, called unflatten um, from string so the way these UDP functions work in LabVIEW is they regardless of what the data is that's actually being sent they give us a string and then it's up to us to to unpack that those bytes into whatever particular data types we need and this unflatten function is what does that so we got to add some constants onto here which specifies a byte order uh, native is what has worked for me on this particular installation under Windows I don't other operating systems or you know if if Xplane was running on a different machine on a different operating system that might not be the case but it works for me need to tell it whether the string itself contains any data about the string length uh, we need to add that because it assumes that it does and our data does not we need to feed the string into it and then the last thing we need to do is feed in this uh, type cluster so so that it doesn't matter what the values are, all, all it cares about is the types of these elements in this cluster. So I said before these are all 4 byte um, floats which in LabVIEW under Windows at least is a, is a single precision float. So we tell it that that's a single precision float and then because we've got over an X-plane we've got two rows selected and each one of those rows is uh, eight elements plus plus the invisible index element. So each one is nine elements. So we've got 18 elements total. Um, so what we want to tell LabVIEW is that we have 18 four-byte floats in this cluster. And I'll go and do that now and then come back. Okay, so that should be 18 4-byte floats and then the two outputs that we'll get is we'll get an array that matches up with these types that we've fed in, uh, which in this case is the, is the only data we care about. We also, if we were only extracting part of the string, we would get the rest of the string out from there. So now if we run our vi we should get all of this data from up here should be displayed in our vi so the first element and then every eighth element after that so the first and the ninth and so on are the index numbers that I that I spoke about that are used over in that data input output screen they're actually uh, four byte integers and we've made them four byte floats so the representation doesn't make sense here um, but we don't care about them and it makes everything easier if we just use one type here now the other thing that Xplane does is anything that's 
not being used it sets to this minus 999 value um, and that'll become relevant when we start sending data back in any data that we don't want to modify we need to manually set to that value as well to tell explain to ignore the data we're sending it so now we can we can run this and we can run it repeatedly and we'll keep receiving that data and the data doesn't change because explains not doing anything but if we unpause it you can see that I can I can keep displaying that data so that's that's good that's a start so what we'd like to do now is collect that data in in a continuous loop so that's fairly easily done you stick the whole lot in a while loop now the only thing that we need to add if we would like is we can add a control to the while loop so that we can exit out otherwise this this loops gonna run forever so just create a control and it gives us a, a stop button Now, this will run in a continuous loop. What we'll see shortly though is that Xplane doesn't always send data correctly, and if it doesn't send data correctly, either the UDP connection times out or we get some sort of data error is we don't have any error handling in here at the moment and so this will all fall in a heap um, so we need to put some some error correction in to handle that um, I'm not going to cover that in detail because it's probably outside the scope of what we're trying to learn about here so I will go and do that in the background and I'll come back when we've got that that error correction in place okay so we've put in this little bit of it's it's error handling it's pretty basic so all we're doing is we've got this case structure um, based on the errors that we receive from the UDP read if there's no error we do exactly what we were doing before and we spit out the value uh, if there is an error we do this other bit of structure has another case structure so for any error code other than 56 we pass the error straight through for error 56 we zero out the errors and this is just a constant of an error constant which is basically sending we're consuming the error effectively here um, but we're not we're not doing anything about it we're not correcting it we're not doing anything clever and so what we'll see is that our VI will now run continuously and it won't fall over but we'll also get glitches in the data where our data will drop to zero every time this this error condition occurs um, I don't know why the error condition occurs I'm not really too worried about it at the moment let's so let's try that if I unpause explain again so now we can see all our values there changing and if your eyes are quick enough you should be able to see that these second third and fourth elements here should correspond to elevation aileron and rudder and then these elements down here 2.4 minus 0.1 and 254 so on will correspond to these second row of elements in x-plane so let's then take a bit of a closer look at just just one of those elements. Let's let's have a look at pitch. So this thing here is a cluster, which is not super friendly for us to use. So what we'll do is we'll bring it down here. And we'll turn it into an array. And then from the array, 
we can just pull out a single element. And this constant here will tell us what element that is. So pitch should be the, the tenth element in our array. And let's, instead of viewing it in an indicator, which isn't very, like just a numeric form, it's not very interesting, let's have a look at it in a graph. So we'll go over here and we'll add a waveform chart. And we'll just stick it there. We will turn off auto scaling of the y axis and We'll set that to we'll leave it leave it at minus ten to ten. That, that seems like a good range for pitch. Right, now that will have that view will have dropped that somewhere. Oh, there it is. So if we wire that up to our array, now we should have a a free running line chart that displays pitch. I go and unpause explain so that it starts doing stuff any moment now the AI is waiting for some other traffic apparently let's see if we can prompt it to do something So now we can see over in our VI, we've got this nice running graph of pitch, which is pretty cool. And so we can do the same thing for roll or heading or any of those other parameters in that in that data screen in Xplane, which which is pretty good. So the next thing we need to look at is how to send data back into Xplane. This video is getting a bit long, so I've broken it up into multiple parts. To see how we get data into Xplane, Click the links to part two. If you have any questions, comments or feedback, please post in the comments section below. And if you found this video interesting or informative and would like to see more videos like it in the future, please like and subscribe.